Let's see how to do the in order traversal of a binary tree iteratively. So we will do this using a stack and we will be keeping track of the current node. So we start by initializing the current node to root and we check is this null? No, it's null. So we're going to push it to the stack and move to the left. So we're going to set current to the left. Again, this is not null. We're going to push it to the stack and move to the left. So set current to 4. 4 is not null. Push it to the stack and move to the left. Now the left of 4 is null, so current in this point will be set to null. So what we will do, we will print what's on top of the stack, or we will set current to the right child of what's on top. In this case it's null, so current remains null. And then we're going to pop the top of the stack. Now again, we check is, what is current. Current is null. So again, we're going to print what's on top of the stack to. We're going to set current to the right child of 2. The right child of 2 is 5. And then we're going to pop what's on top. This time, current is not null, so we're going to push it to the stack and move to the left. The left of 5 is null, so we set current null and because the current null we go again a look at the top of the stack we're gonna print what's on top uh, set current to the right child of what's on top null again and then pop what's on top so again we look at current current is null so we're gonna print what's on top of the stack one and set current to the right child of what's on top the right child of one is three and pop the top of the stack. Now we look at current, current is not null, so we're going to push it to the stack and set current to current left. The left of 3 is null, so current is null. Now because current is null, we're going to print what's on top of the stack, so 3. We're going to set current to the right child of what's on top, the right child of 3 is 6, and we're going to pop. The stack. Now current is not null again. We push it to the stack and we're going to set current to the left child of current. So current left. Again, it's not null, so we're going to push it to the stack and set current to current left. This time the left of 7 is null, so current is null. So what you're going to do again is print what's on top of the stack set current to the right child of what's on top the right child of 7 is null so current remains null and then we're going to pop what's on top again current is null so we're going to print what's on top of the stack set current to the right child of what's on top the right child of 6 is null so current remains null and we're going to pop what's on top so again we look at current it's null but this time the stack is empty so this means that we're done so the final output would be Four two five one three seven six, which indeed is the in order traversal of this binary tree. So let's actually see how to implement this. So we're going to have again a function called in order, which takes address to the root node, and it's going to return nothing because our call is just print. So this time we're not going to check whether the root is null and return immediately because this case will be automatically handled in the code that follows. So we start by initially uh, setting current to the root. Then we're also going to initialize our stack. So we're going to have a stack of node addresses, st. And now we're going to enter a while loop from which we will break within the body. And so the first thing we're going to do, as we saw, we're going to check if current is different from null, then we're going to push it to the stack and we're going to move to the left. And we're going to keep doing this. And once current becomes null, 
We're going to make sure that the stack is not empty because if it is, that's where we break. As we saw, as soon as current is null and the stack is null, this means we're done. The stack is empty, break out of the loop. But if the stack is not empty, what we're going to do, we're going to print what's on top of the stack. And we're going to set current to the right child of what's on top. And we're going to pop the stack. And that's it. So that's as simple as it is. So let's quickly run through this code to make sure that it actually works. So, uh, and yes, in case root is null, current will be initialized to null, stack will be empty. So we enter the loop, current is different from null, now current is null, so we go to the else, and stack is empty, so we break out the loop. So as we can see, an empty tree is automatically handled, so we don't need to check whether root is equal to null at the beginning of the function. And now let's actually run through an example where we have again the tree we saw before. So we initialize current to root, root is 1, and we initialize the stack as d. And while true, what we're going to do, we're going to check if current is different from null, we're going to push to the stack current and move current to the left. The left of 1 is 2. Again, current is not null, push it to the stack and move to the left. Not null, push it to the stack and move to the left. This time the left of 4 will be null. So what we do, we this is no longer true, we move to the else, and we check is stack empty, stack is not empty. So we're going to print what's on top for, we're going to set current to what's on top right, the right of 4 is null, so current remains null, and we're going to pop the stack, so remove 4. Again, we check, is current different from null, current is null, so we go again to the else, we're going to check, is stack empty, stack is not empty. We're going to print what's on top, so 2. We're going to set current to what's on top right. The right of 2 is 5. And we're going to pop the stack. This time current is different from null, so we're going to push it to the stack. And we're going to set current to current left. The left of 5 is null. Current this time is null, so we go to the else. Stack is not empty, so we're going to print what's on top. We're going to set current to what's on top right. The right of 5 is null, and we're going to pop the stack. So current is again null, we go to the else. Stack is not empty. We're going to print what's on top, 1. We're going to set current to what's on top right. The right of 1 is 3, and we're going to pop the stack. Current is not null, so we're going to push to the stack current. We're going to move to current left. The left of 3 is null. Current is set to null. So current is null, we go to the else. Stack is not empty, so we're going to print what's on top. We're going to set current to what's on top right. The right of 3 is 6. And we're going to pop the stack. So we go again to the beginning of the loop. Current is not null. We're going to push it to the stack. We're going to move current to the left. The left of 6 is 7. So we go again to the beginning of the loop. Current is not null. We're going to push it to the stack. And we're going to set it to the left. The left of 7 this time is null. 
So we go back to the beginning of the loop. This time current is null. So we go to the else. Stack is not empty. So we're going to print what's on top. We're going to set current to the right child of what's on top. The right child of 7 is null. And we're going to pop the stack. We go again here. Current is null. So we go again to the else. Stack is not empty. So we're going to print what's on top. 6. We're going to set current to what's on top right. The right of 6 is null. I'm going to pop the stack. We go again to the beginning of the loop. Current is null. We go to the else. This time we check is stack empty. Stack is empty. So we break out the loop and we're done. So what is the time complexity here? It will depend on the work that we do in the loop. So if you look at this condition, the first if, the amount of work we do inside is constant. And this is where we actually push a node to the stack. And we know that every node will be pushed to the stack exactly once. So this will execute once for every node. And we have a tree which has n nodes. The time complexity associated with this will be O of n. And also, we know that this body in the else will also execute exactly once for the node because every node will be printed exactly once. So we do again here a constant amount of work and we do this n times, so that's also all of n. So the total time complexity will be all of n. What about the space complexity? Well, it will depend on the size of the stack. So what's the worst case? The size of the stack. So we know that in the worst case, current is different from null, so we can we keep pushing to the left. We can and moving to the left, push and move to the left. Because if we hit the else, if current becomes null, we pop from the stack. So the worst case happens when we keep going to the left. And in the worst case, we will keep going to the left h time, where h is the height of the tree. So the stack will have at most h elements, and therefore the space complexity will be O of h. So that's it. You can find the link to the code in the description below.